So, um, c could you just uh, make a quick introduction of yourself so everyone could um, understand who is our guest today? Actually, Santiago is working with in, in parity technologies as ecosystem developer. That's correct, yes. Um, first of all, Jakob, uh, thank you very much for having me over. And hello to everyone in, in, the, in the call. Um, I'm Santiago, as Jakob said, and I'm working for Parity Technologies as part of the ecosystem development team. Um, yeah. Lovely. So um, what exactly uh, means like this kind of job? What we do in ecosystem development is uh, we try to make the, the help uh, the Polkadot and, and Kusama and Safari ecosystem right develop in, in the best way. And and the, there's different initiatives to do that, but one that I'm working with a lot is what we call success. And, and basically we try uh, to help teams that are building with Substrate, and that's our blockchain framework, um, be successful in, in what they're developing. We actually have a program that's called the Substrate Builders Program, and that's mainly what I'm focusing on right now. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. More and more people are joining us right now. So um, that's really cool because, you know, uh, mostly uh, our audience is not that familiar with the blockchain technology. And uh, I guess you could shed some uh, light on your background, because as far as I know, you are not like a tax savvy person, right? 100 percent 100 percent yeah actually uh a, a bit about myself I'm, I'm actually from argentina from buenos aires i'm a, i don't know if anybody knows anything about buenos aires and argentina but i'm a huge football fan and i'm a huge fan of uh, san lorenzo which is actually uh, the same team that the pope supports so that's interesting I, I am an engineer though although i'm not very technical i'd say i'm not very technical uh, either in what you guys know that's robots and that kind of stuff and I'm definitely not technical on the side of um, more the development side in terms of blockchain. And so, in fact, uh, on my previous job that I did for like eight years, um, I was working as a product manager for PNG, it's a consumer goods company. And my last job was actually like on the diapers brand, uh, on a diapers brand. So I was selling diapers, and that has not much to do with blockchain stuff, right? Um, but yeah, that's a bit of my background. Oh, and uh, what, what did you bring? Uh, I mean, how, how did you get into the blockchain industry? This, this sounds really crazy. Yeah, so I, I've always been 100% into all of this space, right? And I was always very interested on, on, on this idea of evolving like the way that we're communicating between each other, right? Giving control back to the users. and. And that together with all of these like kind of like techno technological puzzles that the the ecosystem in itself or the blockchain ecosystem was solving all of that was always very very intriguing to me um, and and i was although i'm not technical per se i was always very uh, drive by by this uh by this ecosystem so one day i said okay uh, i i really like that i really enjoy that let's make um let's be part of that ecosystem and before joining Parity, I actually moved to Lisbon to study web development so that I could give like a step further into uh, like web development, although that's way, uh, uh, that's not even close to what blockchain development is, but it got me like a bit closer to it itself, right? So I did that, COVID came, so I couldn't move from Lisbon. I, I had to work from there for a while. And, and then when, when I could, I moved to Berlin and I started working in Parity. It's been almost six months now, I think. And uh, for, for how long uh, have you been in the blockchain space? Like, when did you say yourself that it's time to get into this? Well, I've been, it's, it's a difficult question to say uh, that I've been in the blockchain space since X day, right? Because I, you, you never know. Uh, but I, I, what I could say is that I've always been very keen and very interested in this entire movement. And, uh, and I've been following its development for a couple of years. But what I think I, when when I was when I got a bit more involved in it and when I was actively doing things like tinkering around some um, some things and writing a bit of code myself to understand a bit more how it works, I think that would have been like 
a year, a year and a half ago, something like that. We're more into the development of this itself and actively looking for a way to contribute to the ecosystem. Um, okay, so, um, so how do you think, what is like the core issue or issues of the blockchain industry right now? I mean, uh, the whole space, not, not in the Polkadot ecosystem. Mm, well, there's three main a couple of issues that are rising, right? This idea of how do we make this space scalable, uh, the operational costs that are associated with some of the chains, this idea of token holders not being able to decide or to say to have a say on the future of a network itself. Like all of these things um, are, are problems that need to be solved in, in the ecosystem, right? There's like this trilemma that's always discussed that's uh, a trilemma between security, scalability, and decentralization. It's been said that you can get two out of three uh, in blockchain, but as time goes by, I think that more and more protocols are, are, are finding ways to overcome all three of them. And I think that Polkadot might be a very good example of that. However, and this is a very, very personal opinion that I have in this matter, I personally believe that every iteration that has been done so far in this space has shown us the potential that this space has, right? If we think of Bitcoin 2019, we saw there that a decentralized, secure P2P network was completely feasible, right? We could do that, and and that network could hold a lot of value. Right now, we are on Bitcoin almost at a trillion dollars, right? And it's kind of crazy. And that's completely decentralized and strictly peer-to-peer. And then Ethereum came into into play, right? And and they said, okay, this that Bitcoin has done. Why don't we put like a virtual machine on top of it? That's called the Ethereum virtual machine. And let's give it. Let's let's allow people to write some blobs of code, which we, which we call smart contracts, so that they could extend the functionality of of these blockchains. And that's also very cool. Again, these blockchains have some issue with uh, scalability, with the operational costs, and, and that sort of thing. But they've shown us what's possible in the space. And then comes Polkadot, right? Uh, which yeah, is, I mean, I mean, uh, Polkadot has several. like really huge development background. As far as I know, it's been developing like since. 2017 or something like that, oh, 2018, I guess, or uh, that's, that's, could you correct me? It, exactly, it's 2017, yeah. they were in Saturday, uh, in fact, uh, Polkadot's, uh, one of Polkadot's founder, that's uh, Gavin Wood, it's also oh. a co-founder of Ethereum, uh, Yeah, and he was in space for a while now. And, uh, well, <laughs> I actually even remember the uh, previous logo of Polkadot, <laughs> that's, that's quite funny. Uh, so. Uh, why Gavin Wood decided to create this uh, network? Why did he left Ethereum? And this idea of solving this uh, trilemma between security, um, decentralization, and scalability is what drove uh, Gavin Wood into into building this ecosystem, right? This Polkadot ecosystem, and I think that. Uh, and I cannot speak by himself, right? Maybe he has his own his own uh, answer to this question. But w- what I think is that he set himself, he set his mind into developing something that could solve all of them. And right now, if you look at the way that Polkadot does things, Polkadot has a couple of um, characteristics that makes it so that this is achieved. And for example, one of the main characteristics that Polkadot has is something that's called heterogeneous sharding, right? So Polkadot itself allows for different shards or different parachains to connect to a main relay chain. But the amazing thing about this is that this shard, so this parachains, can have their own execution logic, right? So you're not tied anymore to one virtual machine that tells you how to do stuff, one multi-purpose virtual machine. Now you can run your own set of, um, of logic on a chain that basically uh, is designed to do one thing and do it well uh, and yeah. teams building and, on top uh, of that so Robonomics I think could be a very good example of that oh. if you were to set uh, any project uh, any Robonomics project on Ethereum that would be very costly and probably not fast enough but oh. since you guys managed to create your own blockchain and make it specific for this use case that you are uh, that you're building for then all the projects built on top of Robonomics 
have the benefits of blockchain ecosystem with a blockchain that was designed specifically for that. Yeah, I mean, getting back to this uh, difference between Ethereum and Polkadot, I think one of the core uh, things is the governance and the way how Polkadot uh, funds uh, different developers in the ecosystem and also allocates um, uh, like grants for developers that are like creating and uh, building the ecosystem. Uh, I mean, in Ethereum, it's more like an like position of Ethereum Foundation is more like, hey guys, it's an open source solution, and uh, let's build some something. And if someone comes on the on their forum, uh, it takes like very long time to make a decision to get some funds from the Ethereum Foundation that's supposed to, uh, you know, build this infrastructure and support other uh, contributors um, of the network. While in Polkadot. It's it's completely different in terms of governance. Maybe you could say more about that and introduce the way how uh, the governance in Polkadot works in terms of funding different projects. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's one of the other key things that Polkadot brings into the table. As I was saying before, there's this heterogeneous sharding, there's scalability, but there's also governance. And this idea of that any dot holder can uh, change the way that the um, that the network runs. So let me briefly tell you like how governance works in Poker, right? So think of governance as a combination between upgradability and agency. Upgradability means that things can evolve in time, right? Without the need of forking, and that's another very uh, essential characteristic of Poker and Poker only. And then agency, giving people the power to decide what to do, right? So if you own dots, if you've got at least one dot, you can propose things to a committee and the committee can do, um, uh, if you get enough packing, can do the, the change in the ecosystem as you're proposing it. Uh, this committee is also in charge of, uh, of managing the treasury of the Polkadot and Kusama network. There's a committee for Kusama, there's a committee for Polkadot. And what it does is that if anybody in the ecosystem, whether they are dot holders or not, has something of value to, to bring to the ecosystem, they can submit a treasury proposal. And with the treasury proposal, all of the people in the committee are gonna review that proposal and are gonna decide if they want to fund it or not. And if they do decide to fund it, then just like that, you'll get your dots or your KSM depending on which network you're using that. Um, and I think that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, for sure. Actually, um, we also made one proposal, uh, but that's another theme. I, uh, so, would you mind to introduce the uh, Polkadot architecture? Because, um, you know, the next lesson in the Robonomics Winter School is about the cross-chain messaging and uh, some of these students might be really uh, frustrated about that because you know when you're like a ROS developer and then you see this uh, word blockchain and then cross chain messaging and then like what? <laughs> so let me recap a little bit on this idea of the sharded ecosystem that Polkadot has, right? What you're seeing there is a snapshot of a, or a cross section of the actual Polkadot ecosystem. There's a couple of important things in here. First one in the center is the relay chain. And the relay chain is the core of the Polkadot network, the core of this sharded ecosystem where everything gets together and where different parachains, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, can communicate between each other, right? So all around the relay chain, and you see that there's this little like uh, white squares with those, I don't know, it's not a triangle, I wouldn't know what type of figure that is. And that is a parachain. And parachain is one of these heterogeneous shards, right? So Roponomics, for example, is one of those parachains that basically allows, uh, that basically connects to the relay chain. And there's one thing here that's super important about how Polkadot works. And that is that Polkadot uh, pulls the security of the ecosystem into the relay chain. So all of these validators that are connected to Polkadot 
do not need to worry of their own nodes, of their own collator ecosystem, because it's the relay chain which in the end finalizes the blocks and uh, allows uh, and brings security into the ecosystem. So as long as the relay chain is super secure, then everything will work. So you've got the relay chain in the center, you've got the parachains, which are these uh, very specific chains. And then the third component is what we call bridges, right? And I think I had it here somewhere. Yeah, there you go. And the third one is like the bridges, right? So bridges themselves are specifically designed to connect Polkadot to other ecosystems, right? So think of a bridge from Polkadot to Ethereum. Think of a bridge from Polkadot to um, uh, from Polkadot to um, Bitcoin or whatever that might be, right? So you've got this heterogeneous shards all connected together by the relay chain, right? The relay chain being the one providing the security to the ecosystem, and then these very specific uh, bridges that help connect the ecosystem to other blockchains out there. This is like an overview of uh, the entire Polkadot uh, architecture. Any questions about this, by the way? Um, if you've got questions, guys, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, shoot it. I'm happy to. Um, but if there's no questions about this architecture itself, I would like to go one step further and touch a little bit on the consensus mechanism, which is also quite exciting, I'd say. Well, l um, l let's, let's just valid. discuss yeah. the way how uh, parachains can communicate with each, between each other. So, because, so for example, um, someone launches a a robotics device on Robonomics, right? So it's yes, it, yes. It, it is connected to a specific wallet, meaning that it's autonomous economic agent that can, for example, interact as a wallet, right? It's, it's a wallet in terms of blockchain. Uh, it can interact with um, different functions in other parachains, for example, in the DeFi to take a land or in uh, some smart contract with the, the parachain that provides smart contracts functionality to, you know, interact with uh, someone else with, with uh, to, to make an agreement with a human being, right? Or with other robot. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And again, think of this, think of how crazy this is that Polkadot is this ecosystem where it's very specific applications running on very specific chains can connect with other very specific applications on other very specific chains, and they can connect seamlessly. And that's through something that we call XEMP. So I also have a slide for that, if you give me one minute. Let me go through all of this, just one second. I'll be able to, there we go. So that's what we call XEMP. And the chart itself might be a bit complicated, but I'll try to, to, to explain it uh, so that you guys can understand. The, basic idea here is allowing two parachains to connect between each other, right? And when I say two parachains, that means an application running on top of a parachain or the parachain itself connecting to another application on another parachain or another parachain itself, right? It doesn't really matter uh, that detail. So the way that XMP works and XMP starts for cross messaging passing is that the very first step that needs to happen here is that the sender chain, right? So the chain that wants to send that message needs to open a channel with the chain that wants to receive that message, right? Once that channel is open, then the communication can start. So let's say that you're building uh, uh, an application on top of Robonomics, then Robon the Robonomics chain will need to open the channel with whatever chain uh, you want to connect to, right? Once that chain, that channel is open, then communication can start. And how does communication start? First of all, one of these collators, right, one of these nodes of parachain A will start gossiping the message that wants to be sent amongst its own collators and among the validators from the relay chain that are right now validating that specific parachain, right? And with this gossiping of the message, the message actually contains the message itself, a timestamp, so when the message was sent, and um, a destination, right? So right now what we have is a channel that's open between two parachains and a parachain that's sending through gossip, and gossip means like nodes talking between each other, 
the actual message uh, that wants to be sent. However, since this channel was open with another parachain, on the receiving end, the parachain B, the collectors of the parachain B, start to request this message. Start saying to the network, hey network, I'm supposed to receive a message. Did I get it? Did I get it or didn't I get it, right? So whenever uh, the, the parachain has a message, it, the real chain has a message, it sends it to the parachain B because it's a parachain B, the one that's expecting that message. And that can be done because uh, the validator from parachain B right and the collators of parchin b are in sync because these collators are also full nodes of the relay chain and please stop me with questions if i'm going like way in depth here uh, it's all right the overall idea here is that there's two chains with, uh, with an open connection one sending a message and the other one receiving that message once the collator of this parchin b receives that message it can sign it into a block send it to the validator of the parchin b or the validator from the relay chain that was assigned to parchin b and the message is then received. That's like the overall so, idea on so, how it works. So on this uh, diagram, um, mm -hmm. yellow and green are nodes that consist the whole database from parachain A and B, right? Correct. That's correct. Yeah, they also are shared full nodes of A and B. And you will see in white, the actual sending collector, that's the one that sends the message. And those pink and blue, like bigger um, rectangles or circular rectangles, are the validators that live on the relay chain, and those help the message uh, flow from one place to another. Um, do you have any other questions? Um, okay, let's let's go further then. And one thing that I think it's key of this is that this is unique in the blockchain space. This never, never happened in the blockchain space before. Right now, all, um, all blockchains that exist out there live in their own wall gardens, right? So Ethereum lives on Ethereum. Bitcoin lives in Bitcoin. Um, other blockchains live in other blockchains. Polkadot is the first um, blockchain uh, protocol that enables this type of communication between two very specific origins. And this is super crazy because this is allowing for a new uh, way of interaction between these distributed uh, ecosystems. By the way, what's, what's about uh, the um, incentives for, for those two full nodes? Uh, that um, works for parachain A and B, do they get like any bonuses for uh, maintaining this uh, cross-chain communication? Yes, they do. And, and, and this is exactly what I have in here, right? So this entire ecosystem uh, has the, consens the consensus protocol is called Grandpa, and one of the key components of this entire consensus protocol is what we call the nominated proof of stake. Some of you might be aware of the way that Ethereum and Bitcoin use proof of work as part of their consensus layer. Um, and the idea behind all of that is having a mechanism to which uh, validators that are the ones that are keeping up with the truth of, of the entire network uh, assure the network that they're doing things right. So in the case of Bitcoin and the case of Ethereum, you are requested to perform a lot of work, a lot of imp unproductive work, to be honest. Uh, and if you do it right, you get rewarded with Ethereum or Bitcoin. If you get it wrong, you don't get rewards and you basically lost all of that power, right? For you to get a dimension of, of how this is, and I'm not so sure if this is 2020 or 2019, but to run the Bitcoin network, you need as much power per year, you need as much power as Australia. And to run the Ethereum network, you need as much power as Paraguay, right? So there's countries, you need the same amount of, of, of power that these countries to run this network. Uh, it's completely inefficient and it's slow. So what Polkadot is doing is it's putting that into its toes and it's saying, okay, we're going to go for a system called nominated proof of stake. What that means is that these validators will be keeping up with the actual uh, state of the chain, right? And in doing so, 
they will provide some state. They would say, well, got an ecosystem, here are, let's say, 10 dots. If I do things well, you give me back my dots and you give me rewards behind that. If I do things wrong, you keep my 10 dots, right? I'm oversimplifying this, but just for you to get more or less the idea of what's going on. Okay. However, since this idea of governance in this network is super important, this is not only a proof of stake mechanism, but a nominated proof of stake. So if you hold dots and you don't want to run a validator for yourself, then what you do is you nominate a validator. And then that validator has a bigger stake. It has its own stake, plus the stake that you put on name on the name of that validator. And if the validator does the things right, it gets all the money back. If it does the things wrong, it, both parties get slashed. And both nominator and validators, which are basically these two things in here, so the, the little dots that you have in there, and uh, the sorry, I'm not big, not very good with this animation. There we go. So the little dots that you've got in there, and the rectangle with rounded edges, let's say, uh, both live on the relay chain, and that's why I was telling you before that is the relay chain, the one that is pulling all of that security effort into this entire ecosystem. On the power chains themselves you've got other types of nodes, which are called collators, right? And these collators are the ones that uh, are producing blocks that then need to be finalized by the validators of the relay chain. And that's basically how this mechanism works. Um, I guess that was a great presentation, really. I mean, I'm pretty sure you answered most of the questions from the audience and I will share a record of this um, when we will end the podcast. And uh, guys, do you have any questions about the Polkadot? I, I guess that's no. So, uh, by the way, uh, Santiago, you could uh, see uh, the lesson four in the Winter mm -hmm. School uh, text channel. So, I guess most of the attendees of Winter School didn't get to the live. So I'm pretty sure that uh, the record will help them to go through this um, during the lesson. No worries at all, yeah, go with that. And if you need any help from my side, you just let me know. I'm happy to help. As I told you at the beginning, I think that this winter school that Robonomics is hosting is super interesting. Um, and it talks about this value of creating a community around these networks, which is super important. So kudos for that. Yeah, actually, we're also planning to host another one uh, this summer. It's going to be huge. Summer school then. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, super cool. thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. And um, would you mind to share something else? I guess we like covered everything. Yeah, yeah, not from my side. I mean, I'm going to share the presentation with you so that you have it. Uh, yeah. This idea of these networks with less trust between each other, but in the end, more truth is something that uh, I really like to always say. Uh, it's something that Gavin Wood always say, and I really like to echo those words. Um, and again, if anybody has any questions or uh, or if I can be of any help, yeah, go please let me know, and I'm happy to do so. Sure, sure. Well, I will get back to you if uh, if something will happen, but I guess everything will be fine and we will be able to help guys to accommodate with the Polkadot by our own as well. Um, so really looking forward to our further collaborations with you, Santiago. Amazing. Definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you very much for having me over. Thank you for your time. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Yeah, cheers.